Hi, in this tutorial I'll show you how to create a realistic ocean in Blender. Let's get started. First, add a plane object to the scene by pressing Ctrl and A and selecting Mesh. Next, scale it up by pressing the S key. Go to the Modifiers tab and add the Ocean Modifier. The Ocean Modifier simulates ocean waves for you. You can increase the range of the ocean in the X and Y by adjusting the repeat inputs. Keep in mind that higher repeat values can reduce performance. Increasing the resolution enhances the surface details. Let's zoom in. This setting significantly impacts performance because it adds more subdivisions. The render input controls the level of detail that is applied during rendering. The value of 50 is sufficient for now. The time controls the simulation of the water. Pressing space won't show any changes for now. Let's use this hashtag frame divide number. Note that higher values will result in slower simulation. Now press the space bar to see the simulation in action. Depth is less critical compared to others, so we can ignore it. Size and scale are different. Reducing the size can increase the intensity of the waves. Alright, it looks good now. You can scale it up by pressing the S key. Adjusting the spatial size affects both the scale and the shape of the waves. Changing the number in random input will result in different wave shapes. I think a value of 1 works better. Generate normal creates a normal map, but it's not needed for now. Use this section to adjust the wave shape. Scale option controls the size of the waves. High values can cause the waves to become tangled, so adjust them carefully. A value of 1.1 works well for this setting. The smallest waves help define the details of the wave patterns. Increasing the choppiness can make the waves appear flatter. Now press the space to start the water simulation. The wind velocity controls the speed and power of the wind, but it's not necessary for now. Use this input to adjust the alignment of the waves. Let's run the simulation. As you can see, it resembles the edge of the sea. You can adjust the direction of the waves using this input. Finally, the damping setting controls how much the waves are distorted. I'll skip the phone settings as they are not as important as the others. The spectrum setting can alter the entire shape of the ocean. You can observe a lot of details. This setting works well for rendering distance scenes. Now let's reduce the scale of the waves. I could increase the resolution, but this type of ocean is still suitable for rendering distance scenes. It doesn't look good up close. Let's zoom out. The final step is bake. This part will turn the simulation into a static animation. You can set the range for the simulation and then press bake. Everything looks good. Now let's add a sunlight by pressing Ctrl A and then lights. Move the light to this position and then activate render mode by pressing the Z key. I need to change the direction of the sun so that the shadow becomes visible. Now it's time to focus on the most important part, creating the material. Click new to create a material and then give it an appropriate name. I have a principal BSDF shader here, which is suitable for the material I want to create. The first is a color. You can choose a color like blue, but for now I'll use white. 
The next is metallic. Let's increase this value. Metallic works for my needs, but I'll adjust it to a lower value. For roughness, use a low value. You can refer to the water surface to gauge the effect. I think it looks good. In the specular section, lowering the IR will help achieve a more focused reflection. Transmission controls how much light passes through the material. Set this to a high value. As you can see, this is essential for creating a water-like surface. In the coat section, you can add small wet spots to the surface. This can improve the appearance of the material. Sheen can add highlights around the shape, particularly following the surface normal. As you can see, highlights are appearing on the weight. Alright, the material is nearly finished. To improve the lighting, let's add an HDRI. Navigate to the World section. To add an HDRI, press Ctrl A. Then search for Environment Texture to add it. Click on Open button. I have downloaded these HDRs from HDRI Haven. Let's select and open one. Connect it to the color. For more details and lighting and tips, check out the tutorial here. Everything looks good, and the water material is working effectively. The sun is no longer needed. If the surface lacks detail, you can increase the resolution. However, this may impact performance. Let's set the resolution to 25. The water surface looks good. Now let's simulate it to evaluate the performance. Press space to start. As you can see, the performance is lacking. I can use a different technique to add details. Instead of adding real details, I can use a normal map in the material. I have a simple normal map here and you can download it from my website. The link is in the description. Now let's drag in the texture. For this type of texture, make sure to select non-color. Press Shift A and add a normal map node. Additional details have been added to the surface. Press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate node. Next, adjust its scale to fit the water scale. I'm referring to the number 3. I also need to lower the normal strength since a value of 1 is too high. Everything looks good now. For the final touch, I'll add some post effect. In the render settings, enable the bloom effect. To add reflections, you can enable this effect. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions and ideas, feel free to share them in the comments.